Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and today I am going to be looking at things that you can make using your first edition vintage Cricut machine. Now really this is not an instructional video on how to use your Cricut machine and of course the tips and tricks in this video could be used with any type of die cutting machine or any version of the Cricut that you may have. But sometimes I think when you focus on the most recent version, you think that what you can't do is do those same things with your older versions. So today I'm going to be focusing on not how to use the machine, but more what can you do with the Cricut cuts once they've been cut. Look at this. How long has it been since you uh, saw the original Cricut? with the little foamy thing that goes up here. So today we're gonna to be working with some projects that you can use um, with any type of die cutting machine, even the first edition Cricut, so stick around. So let me show you a little bit how to stack these fonts. Um, I'll show you two different ways. They're definitely not my ideas. Um, I, one of them you can use with a liquid glue and it's just essentially making it look like um, you have a chipboard uh, lettering. Okay, so you would just, uh, I think I'll be zooming in here if I haven't already. And, oh, you have to excuse me, I have the windows open. It's a very, very, very nice afternoon when I'm recording. But um, we're just literally just putting a little bit of liquid glue and I'll only show you one this way and then one the other way. And then it, uh, toward the end there, I'll do a little bit of a show and tell of how I did these, what I did with my techniques, okay? The finished products. So then you just stack them on top. Now you could do, uh, the liquid glue then allows you to have a little bit of wiggle room so that you can slide and line it up just perfectly. Um, I have a few liquid glues that I like. Of course, you can use anything that you have on hand. I will uh, link down in the description to the uh, two that are my favorites. I like the Wendy Vecchi um, Perfect Card Adhesive and I like the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. Those are my favorite liquid glues. There. And then you might not be able to see, but it's basically uh, thicker. Come on. There we go. Maybe this is the issue. Basically, we have what is uh, thicker than a regular card stock um, and you can stack that up as many times as you want okay so that's the first way to stack your letters another way would be to use like a um, like a sticker maker um, I have the the Xyron um, little sticker maker and you would do the same thing the only thing is is that when you're using any type of dry adhesive it's really um, helpful to have like an undo let me show you how to uh, do this there we go. I didn't have it pulled in right. Okay. Now then when you want to uh, tear it off, just hold on to the sides and tear that off as such. And then rub or you can rub with your finger. And then when you peel this off, you have um, you can just continue to rub uh, with your finger and get this adhesive off. This is probably it looks like it takes longer to do it this way, but this is probably my favorite way to do it because sitting and I. You know everybody's different, but to me, sitting with liquid glue over and over, um, I don't know why that is, sometimes that can frustrate me a little bit, 
when I'm using liquid glue, not any particular liquid glue, just liquid glue in general. So I, I think I tend to prefer a dry adhesive. Um, so yeah, I like doing it this way. Okay, so then um, you've got, I have a second one. And what I'm gonna do is take the, off the paper. This is some undo adhesive remover. It temporarily makes something sticky, not sticky. Or if you're trying to get adhesive off of something, it removes the adhesive uh, real nice and easily. So now I've got a sticker. My font is a is a sticker, but I will put just a little bit of this undo on it. And even though it's still a sticker, it's a non-sticky sticker. Just for a little bit, just for a minute or so. And now I can do the same thing that I did with that liquid glue, slide it around and make it perfect so that when um, the undo dissolves, I, all I have left is a plain old double stacked font. And this would be great if you're doing, you know, five stacked high or something like that, you know. Now, if you haven't, if you're a little bit curious about undo just in general, um, you can, if you want, I will also link to the video that I did where I time tested undo and just talked a little bit more about that. So this is it. There. It's the same thing. And by now, then, um, you know, I've got a, the same exact thing as this letter M. Um, just a different way to go about it. Here's another example of stacking the fonts to create a, like a stacked dimensional look. And this is actually only too high, so it's not very thick, but you could go as high as you wanted. And I use liquid glue for this as well, the same way as I did in those uh, other examples that I showed you. And this is another just image right from the Cricut. Sometimes I think we forget about just the Cricut, the vintage Cricut, the older models, whatever. So um, this is a layer. There's the the total background and the shadow background I did with some holographic paper and whatnot. And then I used inside, I used the little, um, it's a pop-up die. Uh, I think, oh, it's a pop-up die from Creek Bank Creations. And you can actually put a gift card right there so that the gift card pops up, you know. But what a nice little card for a variety of occasions. Here's another one um, that I made with the Cricut. And this also has the stacked uh, font as well. This I is two, two layers, no more than two layers. I actually didn't line that up super awesome right there. You could see that little, um, I should have lined that up a little bit better, but it's okay. Look how cute the little monkey is. And don't you know that I did uh, some Nuvo drops for his eyes, a white drop, and then while it was still wet, just right on top of it, a, a black dot. Now, another thing about this card, and this goes into another uh, point about the vintage Cricut, is to use complementary images stacked as part of the background. And you'll notice that here's the monkey on the front of the card, but as part of the background, it's not really monotone, but it's part of the background. It blends right in. Are the bananas, which could be its own focal point on another project, but for this one, I just put several of them together and used them as part of the background. And then I cut out this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> my windows are open. <laughs> There's big trucks going by. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> I debated about whether or not to actually put uh, little eyes in with the bananas, but I didn't because I didn't want that to, I, I didn't want attention to go to the bananas. I kind of wanted that to be an afterthought or something that you, you look at later. And then I used a little bit of a Wink of Stella shimmer pen as an afterthought also on the font. I love that card. Isn't that great? All using the vintage Cricut. So another thing that you can do with the layering and the stacking of your cutouts from your Cricut is um, to use them to layer front and back inside a um, like an acetate panel. And this is actually how the, this is one of the cutouts from the Cricut. I figured out how to, um, 
get it so that this this actually let me move this out of the way this actually is the cutout and then you would score it here but this just seemed like so flimsy to me and I thought well chances are I wouldn't just have a card open like that I mean honestly for me I would do one of two things I would either cut that right there and make it a shaker where this was the top and this was the bottom and have a shaker in the middle with a piece of acetate. Or in this case, I just scored it and uh, folded it. I did get a little bit of white paint right there, but, and put a piece of acetate and then layered another cutout from the Cricut on the other side, because otherwise you'd see all that glue and stuff on the inside so I don't know that's just a nice tip this is just some white paint I'm sort of mid project and this was really the part that made me turn the camera on because I wasn't going to show you this thing until the very end um, but and I know there's a big glare I'm sorry I don't know how to I guess I might just have to go like that but look at this this frame all the parts are from the Cricut as well now the outside is the frame and then see the brown here I'll show you on this other one this one doesn't have the this one doesn't have the paint on it, but it's I used gold metallic cardstock, okay, to cut out the frame, and then it had a layer, and I cut out the layer in the brown, and it was pretty intricate. And I have to say that I did use um, liquid adhesive for this, but then I added some distress ink right on the inside with just a blending tool, and after that I added just a little bit of white paint. And look at the big difference. This may not be your thing. But look at the difference that the white paint makes. And that's the part that I was literally mid, I was in the middle of doing. And this is all I did is just, this is white acrylic paint that I, it's like 50 cents at wherever store is nearest you. And I always keep some on my desk, put some on my finger, and um, I just tap around the outside like that. See that little bitty outline that I'm making? It doesn't really do that even that much, but it's something that you can see. And then when you after you get all the way around, you can just go back and just tap. Well, I maybe did it a little bit too much right there. But even so, just a little bit of tap, 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 tap. And if you have too much paint, I mean, even that little bit, it's not gonna make it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just paint. Doesn't that look good? And you could just, I mean, this is just the same old Cricut cartridge that I've had since the beginning of time. And you know what? If I don't like it, why couldn't I just take a baby wipe and wipe it off? You know? Because I already used the metallic paint, right? There. It just comes right off. So, just a little tip of how to make your... Um, your Cricut cutouts really kind of come to life. And I'm sort of creating as I'm, I mean, I have my tips and tricks ready to talk to you about and my examples ready, but here I am a little bit creating on the fly as I, as I talk. So uh, some of you may be the kind of crafters where you can't necessarily do two things at once. I get, sometimes I get really sucked in to what I'm doing and I forget that the camera's on, so. Yeah, that's really nice. Now here's what I plan to do with that then. Make sure I don't have white paint on my fingers because that will end up where I don't want it. So now here's my, um, my card with the acetate. And I was thinking of going like this with this over top and then making it a little thank you card like this on the inside and then I mean this might, might be a little bit simple but I don't know sometimes like look at that that might be nice as a thank you for I don't know if you ever go to like a wine tasting or you ever go to like somebody's dinner party house or it's some sort of a you know just like a Christmas party or something like that I don't know it might be nice to send a thank you note that looks a little bit sort of I don't know sophisticated like that then um, my thought is when we open it up see this will be here and how are we going to adhere it? We're going to adhere, have to adhere it with glue somehow and we'll see all that icky glue. 
So now we have a second one that we can put on the inside. And we can layer, and we have a second sentiment, remember? That we can layer on the inside. Well, we wouldn't be able to do it that way. We'd have to do it backwards. But even so, then you wouldn't see the glue. The whole point would be not to see the glue. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Let's do it and we'll come back at the end. So to, I'm gonna use my Xyron machine. This, uh, to get adhesive on the back of this frame, I was gonna use liquid glue, but then I decided I didn't feel like it because I'd already done so much liquid glue today. But um, this machine I have had forever. When I say forever, I mean I am not joking. I have literally had it since it came out uh, decades ago. And all you do is put, but my refills, I just got a refill for it. Uh, I bought a refill for it off of Amazon like just a couple months ago and it fits just fine. And you just crank it and sorry about that noise. And then you tear it off and now the, it, this is a sticker. So now I don't have to mess with it. Um, or liquid glue and you do have to rub a little bit with your finger to get off some of the excess you know adhesive it just is a little bit gummy when it comes out but I mean you know what do we expect because it's creating a sticker and um, it's getting in all these little nooks and crannies that we won't have to worry about later also not a bad idea to have that little adhesive remover um, let's see, where's mine? This little adhesive remover, it's uh, good for later. Okay, then when we go like this, I'll do it up close so you can see. And slowly, see? Look at that, lovely! And I'm just gonna use my finger, just a little bit. Now this is what we would classify as a quote unquote dry adhesive because it's not liquid glue. Um, and I'm so sorry about that noise. It's really truly such a beautiful day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I live in Amish country and there are very many farm vehicles that are going by my house today. And maybe you can even hear the clump of the horse's hooves because there's as many farm vehicles as buggies that go by my house on a daily basis. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Wonderful. And now I'm going to put that right there. That's exactly where I want it. All right. That's great. Mm hmm really like that a lot now to get this one on the other side I have already run this through the Xyron and uh, rubbed it around real good but let me show you what I'm gonna do here so let's see do I want to do that like that yeah I do so here I have my undo adhesive remover and once I pull this off it's gonna be sticky but I am afraid of myself here. I don't know that I'll be able to line it up real good. Uh, so I'm gonna use a little bit of undo to give myself a little time. Of course, you don't have to do this at all. Um, I use undo regularly in my crafting. Although, you know what? I didn't really use it until probably recently, maybe within the last I don't know, a year or two. I just, I had heard of it. I knew that people used it, but I just didn't think it was for me. And I truly and honestly, I didn't think it was safe. But um, then I kind of read up about it and did some, a little bit of my own investigating. And it really is, it really is safe. So here goes. What happens is you just pour a little like this. Okay. Yep. And then um, we can stick it and move it. We've got some time. Now normally, it may not have looked like that did much, but normally without the undo, you know, the first little corner or bit that's stuck, that would be it. That's where your piece would go. 
and you'd have to be really careful. But now I had um, a little bit of time and now that'll dry and be good. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Love it. Now this, for this, I will probably just use a liquid glue. Okay. And put this just like that. Maybe a Nouveau drop right there. Oh yeah. And maybe the Nouveau, well, should I do it in white or black? Probably white. Maybe. And then we'll do some other decorating around there. And then on the inside, we'll put the same, this one, back to back with it, with more liquid glue. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Another thing that you can do with your Cricut cutouts is to adhere cutouts to cardstock like to mimic the look of regular embossing. Um, so for example, like these were cut from that gold metallic cardstock. And if I just adhered them, this is just a scrap, um, you know, all like that, or just did like a variety or something or had, you almost need three or more. Um, that would mimic the look of regular embossing and that way that would uh, really create a lot of interesting textures and looks. Here's one that I did. Well, here's two that I did. This was the one that I did on the on the gold. And I don't know if you can see. Let me tip on the light a little bit. There you go. Look how nice that looks. And that is just several of the uh, Cricut cuts. Just I ran it through my Xyron machine and then just stuck it right on top. Doesn't that look nice? It's a really nice background. And then here's another one that I did. Um, let's see, can you get a good view there? Yeah, that's just nice. Just really extends the life of your cardstock and your cuts and just uh, gives you some different ideas to do with your, um, with your Cricut cuts. So here's what I made with the cutouts. Look! So here's the bottom. Uh, I just took the two uh, parts. I'm trying to work with this light here. There, that's much better. There's the bottom um, of the paper that I made or the cardstock that I made with the cutouts. And then I just basically cut it in half, mounted it on a blue panel, wrapped it in some twine. This right here is another shape cutout from the, from the basic Cricut. And then here's some stacked, uh, a stacked sentiment. These little flowers are the insides of this cutout. And I just added some uh, sequins inside. And then these right here are some enamel dots for an accent. Isn't that nice? And then the other one, since I was using the top and the bottom, I could make two at once, and it's basically the same thing. This one actually is a little bit more of a masculine card. I left the tie, like the, the bow off and put a star instead for a birthday card. Mounted it on a blue panel, and you can see that it's just literally two the two pieces mounted on top of a blue panel. This one I don't think I stacked. No, I didn't. I didn't stack this sentiment because I ripped the one <laughs> when I was taking it off. So yeah. So just to wrap up, I wanted to showcase just a few more projects that I made with the vintage Cricut and the cutouts. This came for this shoe was from the Cricut. Um, and then all the rest is just stuff for my sash. Uh, embossed paper, a little lace doily, um, this is a stamp that I used some embossing powder on and just made a little square card. With more stamps and stuff. I just really liked, I thought this shoe was really cute. And then I added some like bling uh, right in the middle there. Uh, this was another one that I made with that little, look at the frog. That's that same as the monkey, that cute critters cartridge. These, I think, I'm not sure how I feel about these, but they were just punches from my stash. And I just made a little card, just quick. 
and I found this was a piece of pattern paper and I cut the mortarboard out of the pattern paper and put it in the frog. Then inside, um, this was just a stamp that I had and another cutout, but there's a pocket. Here, I could show you with a piece, just a scrap of something that I have. It's a pocket so you can put like money inside for the graduate. And here's a look at the other ones uh, from the video. We've seen this one with a layered uh, sentiment. And then the little radio boom box. This is the how this one turned out here with the window card in the frame. I love this um, and the stacked uh, sentiment there. And it opens up and look at that on the inside. Isn't that nice? I did put a little panel inside here so that you could write because it was dark cardstock and it was just something I had for my stash. Plus it looks really good when you close it up because look it's got these just in the paper. It had some interesting features in the paper itself. I thought that was really nice. Um, this one with the little monkey. Uh -huh. And all these things made just from the uh, vintage Cricut. And then the cards that I just showed. So, thanks so much for watching, and um, if you enjoyed this video, just give it a, a thumbs up, and please make sure to share with your crafty friends. It means so much when you share the video and when you uh, subscribe. Leave a comment if you've got uh, something to say, or if you have uh, if you want to just make a comment about the cricket you have, your experiences with um, your vintage Cricut machine. What are your favorite cartridges? What are some projects you like to do? And um, we can just all kind of learn from each other in this crafty community. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to click on that bell to receive notifications. Subscribe to Sandpaper Road on social media and Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course right here on YouTube. And we'll see you next time in the next video. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that this is going to be the first video in a series of the Vintage, of vintage Cricut Tips and Tricks. So definitely make sure that you subscribe so that every time I post a new video in this series, you'll get notified. Click on that little bell and then you'll receive all the notifications. So thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.